registration policies that impacted the Latino community. You heard the Supreme Court rule on an Arizona ruling recently. That's going to have an impact here in Georgia. Hopefully, we'll be able to get the numbers up again as well. In Oconee County, uh, there are 430 Latinos registered to vote. Uh, it's, uh, and in Oconee County, you can be proud of the fact that the voter participation rate here was 57.4%. Again, nationally, it was 48%. Here in Oconee County, it was 57.4% voter participation. In the 10th Congressional District, uh, 9,451 Latino registered voters. 9,451. <coughs> with a voter participation rate in the last election of 51.5%. So it's significantly outperforming the national voter participation rate. You've got a lot to be proud of. Uh, to engaging the electric here, and there's certainly more work to be done. Now, what's this prognostication of a swing state? We're talking about 47% voter participation. What happens if we get it up to 55 to 60% voter participation? Latinos need a reason to turn out to vote. They need to be asked to go vote. They need to be invited to go vote. They need to be educated about the candidates. They need to be educated about the issues that are important. Uh, and a lot of that has to do, be done in English as well. So that's just with the existing electorate that we have. Let's look into the short-term future and the long-term as well. There are currently, there are, it's estimated that there are about 200,000 Latinos, legal permanent residents in the state, that are eligible to become citizens but have not. So you take 183,000, 184,000, add potentially 200,000, you're looking at potentially a pool of maybe 350,000 of potential new voters uh, that can be engaged. So we're talking, what was the Romney lead in the last election? 350,000, 400,000, I think it was. It wasn't that big. So when people are talking about Georgia potentially being a swing state, it's because of the changing demographic. Uh, that